Hello and welcome to another vlog or if you guys are new here, hi my name is Jemmy. So I'm a bit rusty on filming and vlogging so if there's a lot of jump cuts. I am so sorry. I honestly haven't filmed much at all in June. I don't think I filmed anything really. I'm trying to think. I know my birthday was the beginning of June which my husband got me this little guy as a birthday present. He did get me other things, but he did get me this as a birthday present. And I think I filmed a come book shopping with me or spend the day with me vlog. I think that's like the only thing that I filmed. And to be honest, it tracks because I did not read anything at all in June. I did read Wattpad stories and Webtoons because I just wasn't able to like sit down and pick up a book physically to read and I wasn't in the mood for it because just everything at work was so busy so much was going on so many things happened last minute and everything was thrown at me and it was just wild and then on top of that my husband's schedule is going to change so there's that too and it just it's been a month and nothing was going right and then on top of that my hockey team was in the Stanley Cup playoffs and some days they play well and some days they play like ass and it's just a roller coaster of emotions that I was so stressed out about and then come to this week this week has been just the worst and it's only Tuesday which concerns me so last week I had this whole plan of sitting down filming and I was going to vlog and upload my video and do all this stuff and everything that could go wrong went wrong all the things that I had planned out during work imploded everything had to be rescheduled everything had to be changed nothing was going well and that just stresses me out and I just was so tired and so exhausted when I come home and I'm just like I don't want to do anything and then on top of that my husband that week had his schedule change so I barely got to hang out with my husband on top of that which was not great and then on Saturday I was like you know what I'm gonna return my library books I'm gonna pick up some library books maybe just the books at home I'm just not interested in at the moment let's see if I can just pick up some cute romance um, and so that's what I did I just checked out a bunch of cute romance well on the way to the library I noticed that something did not sound right with my car and I'm already upset because I have to get my AC fixed at some point we've just been doing a temporary fix with my AC by refilling the Freon but there's clearly a leak somewhere in my AC that I need to go get that checked out haven't had the chance to and my tire pressure keeps going off and my husband keeps having to uh, pump up the air to my tires. And it's always a different tire every single time. So it's not like it's the same tire. So I was like, okay, whatever. But my car was not sounding great. So I'm like, okay, after the library, I'm going to go home, park, and take a look at my tires. Or look at whatever is going on with my car. Well, on the way home, my tire makes a loud boom boom. And I was like, oh, that's not great. It's definitely my tire. Also, excuse the hair. It's, 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 like I said, it's been a week. So my hair is just not cooperating either. Anyways, so I get, I go home, I park after I hear that noise and I look and my passenger front tire is out. It popped. And I was like, great. What a great start to my Saturday. So I'm looking around, kind of checking and seeing how much tires are and whatnot and my husband wakes up he helps me replace my tire because I cannot lift that tire I know how to change a tire I just can't pick up the tire because it's so heavy so my husband does that for me bless him thank him he is amazing so he does that and we call around to see where I can schedule an appointment at different tire places after he kind of agreed like maybe we could just purchase the one tire and I don't need to purchase all four. Typically, I would usually purchase all four, but at the current moment, I have been saving up to replace those tires and I did not have enough and I really don't want to overexpend on tires at the moment. So if my other tires will last, I'm just going to replace the one. So that's what we agreed on. So I scheduled an appointment. I scheduled an appointment for one place. And then he scheduled an appointment for another place because the one that I scheduled for had the tires I wanted. However, you have to request an appointment 
and you have to wait until they approve of it, which is kind of fucking dumb. So luckily we had the secondary appointment because I had a 12 o'clock requested appointment for the one other place. Tell me why they did not approve of my appointment until 15 minutes before. Like, that's mind-boggling to me. I'm sorry, I'm not going to drive my happy ass all the way over to your place to see if maybe potentially my appointment was approved. So I ended up just canceling that appointment, telling them that something came up, I'll reschedule, whatever, I did it. I went to the other place. And that was also a mess because we dropped off our car. I picked out the tires. They did have the one that I want. It wasn't the best kind that I wanted, but it was fine. It still worked. It was all seasons because the weather in my state is so unpredictable that I'd rather have all season tires. So there's that. And so we go about our day and it becomes four o'clock. And I was like, you know what? I don't really want to stray too far from the tire place. So I told my husband just to drop me off and he can go, he can go home. And so that's what I did. I did uh, read a bunch of webtoons while I was waiting because I didn't bring a physical book because they said that it was going to be done by end of day. And it was close to end of day. So I didn't think that I would get much reading done. Well, should have brought a book. Should have known. But then, worst comes to worst, I get there and the girl tells me the tires that they said was in stock was not in stock. However, she was like, we do have a temp tire that isn't all seasons, but it's just a performance tire. We could temporarily do a 30-day trial. You pay the cost of this tire and then you'll come back Monday and then pay the difference. So I was like, okay, that's fine. I totally understand. It's not your fault. The system was wrong. There's nothing you could do about it. Like, I totally understand because, like, literally in the system, it showed that they had it in stock. So, I was like, yeah, that's fine. So, it was not her fault. It is definitely whoever did not update the system. So, I was like, I'll come back Monday after work because I wasn't going to call off work just to go get my tires replaced because I need to make that money. Considering how much I had to fork out for those tires, yeah, I need to make back that money. So, that's what I did. And then coming into work Monday was a shit show. Everything was chaotic. There was a ton of things that was happening, a ton of vendors that was coming in. It was just a whole thing. I was so stressed. I could not wait to get off work. So what I did, I went straight to the tire place. I did bring a book, but I just wasn't really interested in reading it. Like I read a, a few pages and I just was like, I'm not in the mood to read right now. So I just ended up kind of playing on my laptop because I did bring my laptop because I knew that I was going to be waiting there for my car. So that's what I did. And thankfully, everything worked out. I paid the difference for that tire. I go home and it was perfect timing because I could then shower and about an hour later, I can watch my hockey team play in the Stanley Cup final for Game 7 because they were down 3-0 to then bring it to game seven so they wouldn't get swept. To then lose in devastating fashion. And I was so devastated. I was so sad. Like, I couldn't even say I was disappointed. Like, I was because of the way that they played in game seven. Like, they played like ass in game seven. But I'm like, you know what? It is hard to play in a Stanley Cup game let alone to win three games back to back and then try to do a reverse sweep that is done only once ever so i was just like you know what i shouldn't look at it in such a negative light like they did the best that they can and it sucks that they didn't win and i don't think that they're going to be able to go back to the finals because with the way the cap situation is for next year i just bad everywhere for next year, it's not looking good for the team, so I, I think the cup window has closed. So I have accepted the fact that I will never see a championship game ever in my lifetime for any of my sports team, because my baseball team absolutely sucks. My football team absolutely sucks. And my hockey team is the only team that is doing well, and now they will probably have to restructure and um, will kind of suck for a while. Uh, until they can get back to the playoffs, but I don't know. We will see. Because the two star players that they have um, is already on their 10th and 9th season. I don't know how much longer we will be able to keep them. 
before they want to go to a different team. So there's that. So I was really sad. My husband then decided to buy uh, myself and him some Pad Thai because we wanted to try a new Thai restaurant that we haven't tried. And I ate it and then I had an allergic reaction. So that was Monday. Um, so that is why my throat absolutely hurts. I don't know what they put in the Pad Thai, but I definitely had like an instant reaction because my throat started to get really sore. And I was like, you know what, I'm kind of tired. I'm, I'm going to bed. Maybe it's just because I've been up and I, you know, was talking a lot and I was kind of like upset and cheering for the team. So maybe that's why. Oh no, I woke up in the middle of the night and my throat was killing me. So I was, I was definitely having a reaction to something that I had eaten in that pad thai, which has never happened before. And it definitely wasn't the weather, uh, even though monsoon season is hitting right now uh, where my state is, because it's been raining on and off, and it's been super humid at 115. So that's fun. It's like really, really dry in the morning. Oh, no. It's really, really humid in the morning, and then really dry in the afternoon, and then humid at night. So we get all the type of variations in the, the temperature, so that's fun. So not only is my throat really sore from the allergic reaction that I'm having, I'm also having really bad allergies on top of that. My medication is helping slightly, but just the amount of dust storm, the wind, and everything, it's not obviously it can only do so much uh so there's that the amount of this may be tmi this may be gross the amount of snot that i have blown out of this stupid nose is mind-boggling it's i don't know how i'm producing this much snot like it's so gross it is so gross um i did shower to kind of help kind of clear out my sinuses um and I took some Tylenol to help with my throat. I did drink some warm beverages to soothe the soreness. And as well as, again, I'm spitting everywhere. And as well as drinking a lot of water to help with the, you know, just my throat and the dryness. So that is pretty much how my week is. Today was a little bit better, for sure. Still wasn't great because there was still a lot of things happening at work that just keeps coming up that I don't understand why it comes up every time I leave work and I'm just like you know what I'll deal with it tomorrow so I have a crap ton of emails that I have to deal with when I come to work tomorrow so there's that but my goal for this week is to read two books that was the whole point of starting this vlog was to tell you I'm going to try to read two books because I need to finish two there is no ifs, ands, or buts. This is the last week of June, and I need to finish two books because then I would fail my goal of reading two books every single month. And I don't want to fail. I'm, I'm halfway there. I'm almost halfway there. So I am currently reading The American Roommate Experiment by Alina Armez. I read The Spanish Love Deception and absolutely loved it. I really enjoyed the two main characters. They were so fun. I love their romance. I love their dynamic. It was so cute. So I was hoping I would like this. I am only am three chapters in, page 23, and I don't know how I feel about Rosie. She is kind of creepy. I am sorry. But I don't like romanticizing the idea of stalking someone on social media and knowing everything about them and having like this one-sided crush and then finally meeting them. And just, I don't know, I just don't like that idea. And I knew going into this that she had a crush on him and that she did look at his social media. And in the first book, you know that she kind of has a crush on um, the guy because the guy is the main girl of the Spanish love deception. I forgot her name, um, but he's her cousin. So, and Rosie is that girl's best friend. So, I hope I'm explaining that very well. Again, I'm sorry, I'm a bit rusty on this, but yeah, like I thought maybe she like looks at his pictures and like kind of knows a little bit about him, but no, she like knows. Oh, that is again another message for my job. Um, anyways. So she like knows how he got these scars, his dog, certain like little things about him that I'm just like, girl, that's a bit much. 
But I have a feeling that it might be also the other way around too, where the cousin also may know a little bit about Rosie as well, due to his cousin like her being his cousin's best friend so I have a feeling maybe it's a two way street maybe they stalk each other I no well okay I'm using the word stalking slightly okay but I don't know maybe they both know a little bit more than what they are portraying to each other right now but who knows we will see I I don't know how I feel about Rosie god she is so awkward and so cringy and I, I guess it's because like he is her crush and sometimes you act so dumb in front of your crush so I'm giving it kind of that leeway because she has a crush on him and so she's just you know she's just losing it in her mind but that's so far my thoughts. That is my update. I know I talked for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I might cut down quite a lot of this because most of the time it's just me messing up my words. Like I said, it's just been a month and I have been so rusty at filming. So there's that. I also want to show you, this is book related as well. Um, my husband got me this for my birthday and I'm so excited. So if you guys know me, you guys know that I love Harvest Moon. And in turn, I love Story of Seasons. And in turn, I love Stardew Valley. I think I have almost a thousand hours of playtime for Stardew Valley. That's how much I love that game. I have not played the new update that has come out, which is wild to me. Because there's so many new updates to it. But I just haven't had the time, like I said, to really play. So, there's that. But my husband got me the cookbook. Oh, it is so cute. I will definitely not use this because I am not the chef of the family my husband is. So he most likely will use this a lot more than me. But this is for me. This is for me to display because look how cute it is. It is adorable. I love the art. This is just, oh my god, look at the Junimo. <laughs> I love this so much. It is so cute. Oh, oh I just love it. It is it's just adorable. And I love that it also tells you, like, who... Because these recipes are actually in the game. And it tells you, like, who uh, gives you that recipe. So, that's really cool. I love it. It's so cute. I'm going to get back to listening to the audiobook and just kind of running around doing random little tasks that I've been wanting to do. And I will update you guys on my thoughts when I'm more into this book. So excuse the mess that is my back seat. As you guys know, I did get a flat tire, so I had to grab my spare. But unfortunately, I had all this in my trunk. So they needed to be moved somewhere, and the back seat was where it went. I have been meaning to clean it. I just haven't because I'm lazy. It's on my running to-do list. I will get to it eventually. But I do have some reading updates for you guys. So last night, I stayed up until 1 a.m. reading. I didn't realize how late it was because I was just so engrossed in reading that I didn't realize. So when I did, I immediately went to bed because I have to wake up at 5 in the morning. So I'm running on very little sleep, but that's okay. I did get quite far into the book. I am this far in. I have about that much left. I want to say this is about an hour or so of reading. Maybe two. I am not 100% sure because I have time blindness. Anyways, I am enjoying this. I do love Lucas as a character. I think he is so well done and I love him. He has so much depth and his emotions and just how he is. I wish there was more point of view of Lucas than there is Rosie. I do think that Rosie could have been developed a little bit more. I feel like she was very underdeveloped. There is not much to her personality and I wanted more. I definitely think that the Spanish Love Deception and the characters done in that book, Catalina and Aaron, are better developed than these two characters in this book. So I'm slightly disappointed in that. I do enjoy the dynamic and I do enjoy the relationship. I love the tension between them because, oh my gosh, sometimes when they're together and just everything is going on, you could just feel that sexual tension flying off the pages. But I do wish that there was a little bit more to Rosie than what I've read. And I don't think there's going to be much 
more development considering, you know, there's that much left. I think it's mainly going to be focusing on Lucas as a character because the whole book was focused on Rosie, but now I think it's going to be more on Lucas's side and maybe a little bit of Rosie fixing the situation that happened between her and her family. So I think there's that. But besides that, I do think that this is going to be more of a three-star read for me. It's good, but I just wish there was a little bit more because if you compared this to the Spanish love deception, my god, it is not the same. The Spanish love deception was done so well, and I loved that couple a lot more than this one. So I'm kind of sad, but there's my thoughts. I will let you know more once I finish, because I most likely will finish today. Probably not before work, because I'm actually running a little late right now, but... I am definitely going to finish once I get home because I think I have like 150 or so pages left. Maybe a little bit more than that, but we will see. I have some reading updates for you guys. I have finished my first book of this vlog and that is The American Roommate Experiment. And I'm giving this a three star. I'm a little disappointed in it because I loved The Spanish Love Deception so much. It was one of my favorite reads. I love the couple in that one, Catalina and Aaron. They were so good together. Their romance was so great. Their personalities just flew off the pages when you were reading it. And I was hoping that it'd be the same in this one and it was not. Lucas as a character I thought was developed pretty well. I do wish that more of his accident was described and told in the story. I felt like what we got of it was very surface level. I wish that the, it kind of dug a little bit more into that and I felt like it would have given him a little bit more depth as a character. But him as a character is pretty good. I think he was very well written. But then there is Rosie. I felt Rosie was very two-dimensional. I think I mentioned it in my last update. I just felt like she needed more. She was very bland. She's very boring. And honestly, the main character in the first book does show up in here. And her as a character overshadows Rosie. And this is Rosie's book. Honestly, Rosie was so plain. I could tell you three personality traits of her that was in this book. And it's the only thing that was described of her is... A, she is the fixer person for her family. She's the go-to person and everyone in her family goes to her for help. B, she is a engineer turned romance writer and Lucas. That was her personality. Really, that's it. And it just felt like she really wasn't developed. There was like nothing about her. I just wish that they kind of dug a little bit more into kind of her writing, maybe show a little bit more of her writing process, maybe some excerpts from her story, how she was feeling or how she was describing characters. I just felt like there wasn't a lot of her as a writer in this story. It felt just very lackluster. So overall, I thought that the characters were okay. Uh, the romance was okay. Just everything about this was just okay. So that's why I gave it a three star. I will have to say though, there are some scenes in here where the sexual tension was very good and done really well. Then there are other times where I just want to smack my forehead because I'm just like, that is so cringy and just ugh. but that's just personally me that's just how i felt but that is my opinion of this but on my way home i did go to the library because i had to pick up a library hold that i had because i am doing a mini little readathon that's going year long and one of the prompts was to read a book with an envelope or a typewriter on the cover and I don't have a single book with an envelope or a typewriter on the cover so I had to go to my library and look for a book and I found I Kissed Sarah Wheeler and this is by Casey McQuiston this is the author that wrote Red is it Red, White, and Royal Blue there you go I had to check up here but yeah and I really liked that book I did really enjoy Red, White, and Royal Blue I did think it was about I think I gave it like a 4.5 star um, I liked it I enjoyed it and it was a really popular book on booktube when it first came out so when I saw this I was like oh okay that's kind of cute why not you know read it so I'm gonna give this one a shot since I have read a book by Casey McQuiston and really liked it and this one follows a girl named Chloe she is trying to get valid Victorian and her competition is Sarah then one day she kisses Sarah 
and then Sarah upped and disappeared. Shocked, she decided to find out what happened with Sarah and she finds out that Sarah has been seeing other people on the side and those three unlikely people decide to band together to find out what happened to Sarah. So it sounds like it's going to be a fun mystery so hopefully it's not going to be a sad read because that is not what I'm in the mood for but I might read this one next or pick up another one of my library books that I have we will see i'm not sure but i really should read this because this is this month's prompt for that year-long readathon but honestly i haven't been really great at doing that readathon that um i'm kind of really failing at it <laughs> so who knows if i'm going to even continue on with that readathon but we will see because i have just been failing at it so bad i just haven't really been able to read any of the prompts that they have suggested so I think I just might do the best that I can and just move on if I don't end up getting to this and just move on to the next prompt so we will see I don't have to be so strict I do need to finish one more book for this vlog one more so I don't know if I want to pick a small book that is going to be quick and easy or pick up this one and see if I could fly through this one just as quick the words are huge, so I think I might be able to fly through this pretty quickly, but I'm not 100% sure. And it is only 300 and... If I could get my nails to work here. 351, I was going to say. I think it's about a 350-page book. It is, pretty much. So we will see what I will read next. But I think I'm going to take a break because I was reading in a very awkward sitting position while reading this. And now my neck has a kink in it. So that's on me. But I think I'm going to rest and watch some stuff on YouTube and kind of chill for a bit. So that's the plan. It is so hot. I feel so gross. I probably look gross. And I'm all sweaty. But I'm home now and I do have some reading updates for you guys. I decided to pick up the audiobook for I Kissed Shara Wheeler. That is how you pronounce the name. I thought it was Sarah, just spelled uniquely, but no, it's Shara. And I am about 97 pages in. I picked up the audiobook because I have about an hour commute to and from work, so it's a perfect time to listen to an audiobook. And since I have been in a reading mood since finishing my first book, I decided to just grab the audiobook to listen while I drive. And I'm somewhat enjoying the book. I don't know if it's going to be my next five star read. I don't feel like it's going to be, but who knows? It might get better because I still have a long way to go before I finish. But the one thing that I'm not the biggest fan of is the main character, Chloe. She really right now is all about Shara and that's it. Like there's not much to her besides she's lesbian. Well, now you find out she's actually bisexual. Her parents are lesbians and she used to live in California, moved to Alabama and she likes theater and that's about it that you know of her and i feel like she'll get better i'm hoping she'll get better but really right now her main personality trait is shara is her competition and she has to beat her in every single way and i just don't really like that as a character very much i just find that you know it's more out of jealousy and insecurity in those characters which is why they act the way that they do so there's that. But I do like the two male characters, Smith and Rory. I don't know much about Rory, but from what I can tell, I feel like I would like him as a character. I do somewhat like Smith, but we will see how that goes. But I think I'm going to really enjoy the two male, male characters. I also have a suspicion of something that may happen in here because of certain context clues. And I think I'm about, I want to say 60, 70% that I think I'm going to be right. But I could be totally wrong. Who knows? But I am enjoying it. I am going to take a break from reading a slash listening because right now my ears absolutely hurt. And I have a massive headache. I've had a massive headache 
all morning and I took medication for it but it's not going away and I can't physically sit and read while I have a headache because then it's going to turn into a migraine and that's why I feel like my ears are hurting because I've been wearing headphones or I've been listening to things all day today so I just need to take a break from just having something in my ear and just kind of lay down and chill for a bit. I don't know if it's because I am under the weather since I've had a sore throat since Monday and with all the dust storm that has been happening and rain, my allergies have been really, really bad and I think I might have gotten sick because my immune system has just been so shoddy this week that I feel like it is getting worse because yesterday my sore throat went away and I woke up this morning with a sore throat but it's different from how it was on Monday because the sore throat was more of like a soreness because I had an allergy uh, an, sorry correction I had an allergic reaction while this one is more sore in a itchier way like my allergies are kind of causing it so there's that I seem to not be able to catch a break when it comes to my nose and my allergies because I have been coughing and sneezing and just blowing my nose so much this week. My nose is so raw. I have to put so much lotion on it because it just hurts to touch it. That's how much I have been blowing my nose. And I have soft tissues. It's not like I have rough tissues, but it's just the fact that I'm constantly wiping my nose that no matter how soft tissue could be it's still irritating to constantly wipe the same area over and over and over multiple times a day so there's that and I'm pretty sure you can hear the congestion that is in my nose right now so I just need a warm cup of tea and some food and just to relax for a bit and I need to really find another word for Anne but that is what I'm going to do and if I do have more reading updates for you guys I will let you know. I do have to finish this in the next four days because today is Thursday so I have Friday, Saturday and Sunday to finish. So I have today and those three days to be able to finish this book and I think I'll get through it. The audiobook isn't that long and to be honest the audiobook is kind of slow so I might jack up the speed a bit to get through this because I read quite quickly and so when I'm listening I also have to listen as well to the speed that I read because if I don't I get so bored that I don't want to listen so I think I might do that usually when I'm driving I have it on one time speed because I need to concentrate on driving so I don't want to have my brain focusing on two things happening all at once quickly so with driving especially here everyone drives about 10 to 20 over the speed limit so I need to concentrate on that so I need something slower so my brain could comprehend the two things if you know what I'm talking about for people who like to multitask uh, me I do that uh, so yeah this update is longer than it needs to be so I'm gonna let you go I'm gonna go make some food and I'll talk to you guys later I don't have any reading updates but I got a notification that my package came in so I'm gonna do a little unboxing for you guys it's not book related but I just wanted to share you oh my god I just wanted to show you what I got uh, even though it's kind of bittersweet since you know it is actually hockey merch and as you guys know my hockey team lost this week so I got my hockey shirt I was really really hoping they would have won the Stanley Cup but they didn't so there's that I do have one more item coming in and I don't know why they didn't ship it all together but it is what it is anyways so I got a shirt and it's a Connor McDavid shirt. And I'm going to be real honest. Um, I bought a youth shirt. <laughs> because I'm really small. And this looks really big for a youth shirt. Um, I bought a XL in youth. So I'm going to try this on. And I'm going to see what it looks like on me. The fact that I measured myself so that... I could get a shirt that would fit me like a normal size shirt and even a youth is still pretty large on me so I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to take you guys and I'm going to show you what it looks like because <laughs> I'm 
just it's just funny to me oh my god i'm too lazy to take you guys off the tripod so you guys are on the tripod but look look how long this shirt is and it's pretty baggy um so yeah i just ate so i'm, I'm a little bloated please do not judge me it is roomy so i'm kind of glad that i got an xl in youth i think a uh large in youth would have been a little tight so maybe you know maybe the xl youth is is perfect i guess i don't know but it's just the funny part is that like it's still kind of baggy on me so yeah that's just funny that this is still very large on me but you know what i'm okay with it i actually really like the neckline that was the one thing i was kind of worried about was the neckline i felt like it might be too close to my neck and i realized i don't like when the neckline is so close to my actual neck and i feel like i'm suffocating maybe it's just me i don't know but at least I now have a regular Edmonton Oilers shirt. I only had jerseys because none of the sports stores sell any hockey stuff. And when they do, they don't sell any Canadian stuff. So it's really hard to find Canadian merchandise at all here in the United States. So yeah, I have to usually order it online. And I finally decided, you know what, I'm going to do it because my team was in the Stanley Cup playoffs, I might as well. So I did, and now I have a shirt that it's too late to wear, but I still am gonna wear it. And also, there has been some drama about Connor McDavid not accepting the Conn Smythe trophy instead, uh, and he was getting booed. And honestly, like, I understand Florida fans being upset that their player didn't win it, but I'm going to be real honest, the Conn Smythe is for the whole playoffs, not just for the Stanley Cup Finals, and Connor McDavid played fantastic in the whole playoffs, unlike the so-called players that people were suggesting for Florida, so I can see both sides of it, like I do understand like why people think Barkov should have won it, or um, Bobrovsky, but honestly, it's a trophy, y'all won the Stanley Cup. I think that's a little bit more important than a Klon Smythe. So, yeah. But that's just my opinion. Um, so, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to clean up the mess down here. But enough of my ranting. Um, when it comes to sports, I can really, really rant and talk about sports. I love statistics. I love kind of all that jargon when speaking about sports, especially football and hockey, because that's the two sports that I follow the most. Um, but I think... I might step away from being so invested in sports after <laughs> this Stanley Cup because it was definitely a heartbreaking Stanley Cup final. Like, I just am so sad to see my players that I saw all season play so hard and just to lose. It's just, it kind of sucks. And I was so devastated. And I just think, you know what? I think for my poor little heart, I'm going to step away from watching a lot of sports consistently. I had kept up with my team pretty much year long for both sports and they're both very disappointing. But I think I might just kind of step away, maybe watch a few games here and there, but I don't think I'm gonna be as dedicated as I was the past few years. Football, I've stepped away from quite a bit because for football, it's more of I get really upset by my team because my football team would play so well. They would be leading by like three touchdowns just to blow the game in the end. And it always pisses me off. And then it ruins my day. So I've stepped back from watching football quite a bit because of that. Because I'm like, I'm really letting a sport ruin my whole day. Hockey wasn't like that. I And I think it's because of hockey, there's 82 games. While with football, I think there's now 17, 18 games. But there isn't a lot. So like every game counts in football unlike hockey sometimes like if you have an off night it's like okay that's fine other teams are gonna have off nights too so you still have like a shit ton of other games to play so i think that's why i don't get as mad with hockey when my team plays poorly than i do with my football team but i think like i said i'm gonna just step back on it because i just am so invested that my little heart can't take it for football this year though i think I'm going to watch it, but I don't have any expectations at all for my hockey, for, oh my god, for my football team, because they have a new head coach, and 
everyone is having this high expectation for this new head coach. And I'm going to be real honest, I don't think that they're going to come out of the gate very well because the coach still needs to get acclimated to the team. So I think it's a kind of adjustment to find a balance between the player and the coach. So we will see. I know that my team brought in quite a lot of new players. So it's going to be a ton of new faces on the team. So it's going to take me some time to learn who's who and whatnot. So there's that. Uh, I know I'm rambling on. I'm like talking about sports and y'all don't probably care about it at all since this is a book channel. But I don't know. I just like talking about sports and that's like a side of me that I think some of you guys may know if you follow a bit of uh, my other vlogs, I do talk about sports here and there, but I don't talk about it a lot. Uh, <laughs> so there's that. I have rambled on long enough. I'm trying to put back on my watch because I switched my um, watch to this hand. Um, but whenever I'm writing or taking notes of some sort in meetings, I can't really have my watch on because it bothers me. Since I write and this and this pushes up against my little knuckle bone right there and it hurts so much so I usually switch it to my left whenever I'm taking notes or whatnot it was originally on my left but I switched it to my right because I noticed that I look for my time on my right hand side instead of my left so yeah anyways I'm telling you guys stuff that you don't even need to know I'm gonna let you guys go I'm still nursing this headache it's not going away. I have not read any more of my book. I have just been on LawTube watching um, the Karen Reed trial. Well, seeing if there's a verdict for the Karen Reed trial. I don't know if there is or is not. And then as well as the Sarah Boone case where she, I think it's on her like eighth, ninth lawyer or some sort because her new newest lawyer is wanting to withdraw. That, that, that lady is just... Yeah, anyways, I am talking about nothing about books, but if you guys are interested in those topics, let me know because I don't have anyone around me that is interested in that kind of stuff that I could talk to. Um, so if you guys are into books, sports, football, hockey mainly, and law too, let me know because I need some new friends to talk to about this stuff because I talked to my husband and he just... He, he listens, but I don't think he's as interested um, like I am. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I spent 10 minutes rambling on about absolutely nothing to do with books. So, yay. Alrighty, so, do I have any reading updates? Absolutely not. But today is Friday, and I really should listen to my audiobook or read the book and finish it today. So I might finish it tonight since it is Friday and I don't have work tomorrow. So I'm gonna do that, but I have another package. So I wanted to open it and show you guys because why not? It's more sports related. Um, it's gonna be my sad reminder that my team uh, epically failed. So there's that. Um, for some odd reason it said fragile. This ain't that fragile considering once you see what it is, you will know <laughs> but yeah so it is a little puck it is the Edmonton Oilers and Florida Panthers Stanley uh, Cup final um, hockey puck I wanted to get one as a reminder because I do have another hockey puck I somehow have this one I never purchased it but I think this one flew over the glass when I went to go watch the Coyotes game and I ended up getting it I guess I don't know and then I got this puck which is over here and I have to be very very careful with it because it is a signed puck from one of my favorite players and this is actually a practice puck so yeah and funny enough this player used to play for Edmonton then went to a different team got uh, this puck signed there and then he is back with Edmonton again he is now retired. This one's Sam Gagne. Uh, he is now retired, so there's that. I'm gonna put this back into its little puck case that I have for it that is not really a puck case, but yeah. So I have a tiny little puck collection, so there's this one. I do need to get like an official puck um, display because this one is not stable. So I have that, 
but I wanted to get this even if my team lost. I still wanted to get one as a reminder that I got to watch the 2024 Stanley Cup Finals and watch my team lose. But that's why I said, I don't know why they said this is fragile because I'm pretty sure um, this is not, but hey, whatever. I have it now. Here's the back. I don't, it's kind of boring, but hey, there's this. So now I have a little puck collection um, going on. So that means I do need to grab more puck display things for for these. I could have found a place for them. Anyways, I usually talk too much in these updates. So I'm going to let you guys go because my husband just got me food. So I am going to go and eat. Um, I wanted to check if there was something important on here. But it's not. It's just letting me know that it's a puck. So, yeah. Anyways, that's the update. I still did not make a dent at all in this book, and I really should. <laughs> I didn't read at all. I was, I don't know why I didn't want to listen to the audiobook this morning, but I just was not in the mood for it, so I didn't. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Today was a little weird and a little off to, uh, today. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I woke up this morning, and I was just like, <sighs> it feels off. But it is Friday, so yeah. And my husband woke up early. He is usually asleep, but he is up because he was doing chest compressions <laughs> in his sleep. So there's that. And now he's playing Dawn Trail. If you guys don't know what that is, that is Final, Fa Final Fantasy 14. There you go. Which, funny enough, was mentioned in this book. So I thought that was funny. I took a picture and I sent it to him. And he's now telling me I should play it. Pick this up. I knocked down the. Ah, uh, there we go. Alrighty. Now that I've rambled on for five minutes, I'm gonna let you go. And actually, this time I'm gonna let you go. Okay. So I have some reading updates for you guys. I've read a little bit more of my book. I am now 200 pages in, which means I have roughly 150 pages left. And I'm not really enjoying this whatsoever. This was sitting at a three star for me. And it's more like a two now that we're in the thick of it. The reason why I'm not enjoying this at all is because I don't like Chloe as a character. I find her to be very annoying. And for someone who doesn't like Shara, she's very obsessed over her. And it's frankly annoying. Personally, I don't like when characters ditch their friends and Chloe is doing that and it makes me so upset because you could clearly tell that her friends are trying to tell her something but she's blatantly ignoring them because she's too involved in trying to find a person that she supposedly don't really care about and that just really pisses me off. It just, I don't like it. Second, Shara is a bitch. Once you find more and more of the letters, you can really see her true colors and she's really mean. She's not a nice person at all. I just feel bad for the guys, personally. Honestly, I feel bad for Rory. I feel bad for Smith. I love them. I think their character development is really great and they seem so sweet and honestly, I just wish there was more of them in the story and maybe I got their point of view. Like, I wish I got more of their point of view than Chloe. Because Chloe's just annoying. So I'm not really enjoying this. I was thinking about DNFing it. But I'm just so close to figuring out what's happening. And I might as well just finish it. It's going to be about, like, a two, three hour read. So I might just suck it up and finish it. So I'll check back in with you guys once I finish this. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to finish it today. And I'll let you guys know my thoughts. It's only been a couple minutes since my last update and I just read a line that pissed me off so much. Not only did she blow off her friends for weeks, right? And then when she gets called out for it, the freaking line that she says, where is it? Um, maybe she messed up, but it wasn't completely her fault. If she tracks down Char if she tracks Shara down, she can prove it. Like this girl cannot accept any responsibility. Any. Oh, that pisses me off. Oh my god. I ugh. Yes! So my theory that I had is right. Yes. Now I'm just hoping that 
what I want to actually happen happens. But I am so happy. I, yes! <laughs> so happy to be right because I'm not gonna lie that is the only thing that I was really reading for the rest of this book for to see if it was correct and I was right I'm so excited ah. <laughs> uh, but anyways I'll get back to you I know I said I'll get back to you when I finish but I'm just so excited that I had to tell you guys. I just had to tell y'all. One, if you hear that, that is my laptop. It's overheating. I did shut it down, but it's still overheating. Yikes. Second, I finished my second book for this vlog, which means I have accomplished my goal. Hey, my computer turned off. Nice. Perfect timing. But I did finish I Kiss Shar Wheeler, and this is going to be a two star for me. Unfortunately, the ending didn't really bump it up to a three star. It was a good ending, but I didn't think that it was so magical that it would bump it back up to a three star. I really didn't like Chloe as a character, to be honest. I also didn't like Shar as a character either. So overall, this book was all right. I did really love Rory and Smith. They were adorable. I also loved all the other characters as well, which is why I'm giving it a two star. And what I wanted to happen did happen. So I'm super excited that it did. And it was very cute. I did also like the message of the story. So essentially it's kids in high school trying to figure out who they are, living their life, being different than the people around them in a town that doesn't like difference you have to be this picture perfect person and you kind of follow these characters trying to navigate that and you know should they pretend to be who they're not to fit in the mold of this town or to be different and to be then shunned and looked at weird and kind of just figuring that out and as well as the message of if you want to make change you can However, the change that you want to make can't be forced on others. Others have to be willing to want to do that change. And sometimes you don't even realize that there are more people around you that are willing to make a change, but they're too scared to do those change because they feel like they're alone. And that's kind of the message of this, that sometimes you don't know that you aren't alone. There might be other people around you who feels the same and who wants that change, but someone just needs to be brave enough to step up and do it. But at the same time, not everybody will want those change. And that's essentially what this is. I pretty much repeated myself, but hey, whatevers. And also there was a line in here at the end of the book that kind of made me a little bit nostalgic slash emotional because high school, was a long time ago for me okay it's it's been 10 years and when the main girl chloe was talking about how at the end of the school year they were all doing this tradition together she said that you know she couldn't imagine high school without these people and how everyone is going off and doing their own thing and living their own life now now that they're graduating going off to college and that she may not see these people ever again she may see some and she may never see others ever again and that is so true and it just made me emotional because like I think back to my high school and all the people that I've talked to made friends with had class hung out with and how I haven't talked to some of those people and how I've talked to some how I've remained friends with others and it just is very reminiscent of that and just kind of thinking about it and it's it's very true and I think that's why high school graduations are always so emotional because You've been in high school with these people and these people were your world, they were your life. You know, you're being a teenager and this is all you know and once you graduate, you don't know what the world was like and going off to college can be very scary and you just want to go back to high school in your safe little bubble and at the same time, high school does very much shape you and it leaves a strong impression of who you are and how you're gonna be. And that's what it felt like when I was reading this and kind of like that message. So overall, I think the message is great. And if you want to read it, like read it. It's a good read. I just personally didn't really like the main character. She bothered me a lot. She did a lot of the things that I don't really like 
would people do in real life so it just made me have such a difficult time reading it and I thought the writing was all right I think red white and royal blue was written way much better and I think that one leans more new adult than this one this one definitely leans more young adult I know red white and royal bleh, red white and royal blue does lean young adult as well but I feel like it's more new adult to me than this than um young than young adult so yeah but this one definitely is more young adult just keeping that in mind so those are my thoughts but yeah so I think I am going to move away from reading young adults I am going to still read young adult the ones that interest me but I think I'm going to read less and less I might actually go through my bookshelf and look through some of my young adult and maybe read the first chapter to see how I feel because I feel like I have outgrown young adult because the young adult that's being written now is for high school now and my high school experience is way different to how the high school experience is in this day and age so I feel like I can't connect which is why I think I rate young adult books way much lower now because I have read some young adult books that were written more around the time that I was in high school or have graduated and I've liked those and rated those higher because I felt like that was more to what I understand high school to be like because that was my high school experience while this one I think was released recently let me see when it was released I could be wrong but I think this was released recently. Yeah, 2022. So I just, I feel like I can't connect to those characters because the high school experience for them is, is way different than for me. So yeah. But yeah, so that is my second book that I finished. I know that I still have two more days before June ends. And I kind of want to read A Witch Guide to Faking Up. Uh, <laughs> my God. A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Howley. I read the second book to this, which was A Demon's Guide to Wooing a Witch. I believe that's the title. It's a very long title. But this is the first book to that companion series that I didn't know about. So I wanted to give it a try because I did like the writing and the bantering in the second one. So I'm wondering if it's going to be the same for this because obviously witch and demons don't get along. So I hope that the bantering would be great in this like it, it, it was in the second book. So we will see. But yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll finish it in this vlog. Maybe I won't. Who knows? I also have a video idea that I want to do, but I need to kind of check a few things before I do it. So we will see. We will see. Um, I also have to edit. I haven't edited at all, uh, which is kind of bad because I usually upload on Monday and it's currently Friday and I haven't edited anything at all because I have been trying to read and finish two books so there's a lot of things on my plate I think I'm going to just chill for the rest of the night since I have been reading all day maybe hit the showers because it is super hot in my apartment right now I wonder what the temperature is right now I think it's still in like the 90s you guys are currently I'm currently using my phone. it's 104 at 8 p.m. It's 104 at 8 p.m. <sighs> no wonder why it is so hot. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm gonna chill, relax, hop into the shower potentially, and just chill for the rest of the night. Hello. Good morning. It is Saturday. I am going to Michael's and I'm going to take you guys with me because I'm going to try to buy the uh, hockey puck little display thingy. Uh, yes, I have a pimple here. And I'm going to take you guys with me to see if I could find some because there's Michael that is close by to me and I think they have three. It's, it shows that they have three in stock, which is perfect because that's how, how many I need. So I'm going to go. And I'm going to take you guys with me. I know this has nothing to do with reading, but 
I did talk a little bit about sports in this, so might as well do like a reading sports combination, even though I didn't read any sports book in this vlog, which would have been great. But hey, too late now, so we'll go. Also, it's 112 degrees, and it's only almost 12. My clock is about 10. Um, ooh, it's blurry. It's it's 10 minutes ahead. Don't ask me why my clock is 10 minutes ahead, but it, it just is. I cannot fix it. Every time I fix it, it just is always 10 minutes ahead. So I've just kept it that way, but yeah, off I go. But first I gotta put on my seatbelt. I have made it to Michael's, so it is hot and sweaty. Let's see if I'm able to find what I'm looking for. So let's hope. Ooh, it's nice and easy. Okay. Since I did look up if they had any in stock, I know which aisle to look down. So, I think I see the aisle. Let's hope I can find it. Okay, I found it. So I'm gonna need three of these. Yay! Okay, so I got my three uh, hockey display. Uh, hockey display? My puck hockey display. Wow, those are hard. I cannot speak today. I purchased the necessary display case that I need for my hockey puck, so I'm excited. I can't wait, and I can show it off to you guys once I put them together. I am in love with how this looks. Ah, you could barely see the signature because there's like a glare, but like, eh, that's fine. I've had this for a few years, which is why it's it's so hard to see. I've tried to keep it protected as much. Like if you lean it, you can see the signature more. I think the pen was running out of ink at the time. So there's that. Um, but yeah, and then there's this one. And of course, this one you saw me um, uh, unbox. Here are the back of them. So there's this. Uh, let me get that. There you go. So there's that one. And then obviously this one says the official NHL products. So this was definitely not a puck over the glass uh, one. I don't know where I got this. I don't remember how I got it. I just have it. And obviously this one has a plain back. So yeah, this one was a practice puck when they were on the ice. So, but yeah, I love this. It is so cute. Let me turn this one back around. I love this so much. Like, I need to find a place to display these, but look how pretty. Excuse my hair because it's it's a hot mess, but I have not done any reading for this book. I just really chilled all day yesterday, and then I went to bed pretty early. I was super tired, and I like I said, I've been feeling under the weather as of late, and I think it's due to like the whole situation that happened on Monday with my allergic reaction and then not only that I had a lot of allergies because all the dust storms and the storms and the rain just is not good so I just haven't been feeling good and then on top of that this uh, time of the month decided to, to visit me as well so overall this week has just been not the best I mean it started off really really bad the middle was okay and of course then I started my time of the month so there is that but this makes me happy now all my pucks are protected and I can have them on display I just need to find somewhere to put them I have no room in my apartment to really do that I need to stop collecting because there's only so much limited space that you have in an apartment I am currently right now watching some court case stuff the first one that I'm watching is um Sarah Boone I don't know if you guys follow her court case or not uh the judge finally said a we're not gonna appoint you another lawyer and so that's what I'm watching is kind of the docket of that and then I'm kind of like looking at other things with um trades and whatnot that's happening in the NHL right now there's a ton of trade that's going on we will see um yes I do have my coffee um I don't know I just have not been feeling good and I really do want to sit and read but I have so much stuff around the apartment that I want to do so like I don't think I'm going to be able to read unless I pick up an audiobook but I don't feel like listening to anything either I don't know I'm just like in a mood do you guys ever get that way where you're just like in the mood where like you want to do so much stuff 
but you're so overwhelmed and you just was like, I don't want to do anything because I'm just so overwhelmed. That's me right now. That is 100% me. And I just, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just want to have everything done. <laughs> But that's not going to happen unless I get it done. So I'm going to go do that now. Stop being a baby and I'll go do that.